Good afternoon, everyone. I'm happy to tell you about our process for testing and what goes into a patient being tested for coronavirus. Well, I can tell you about how long the process takes itself to perform the testing. So typically, you know, as we move through the other processes, it takes, um, it probably takes about anywhere from um, four to eight hours once we physically start the testing process. So you may sometimes go to your doctor and get a flu test or a strep test in the office, and that only takes 15 minutes, half an hour. And this is much different testing that takes several hours to do the whole thing. Okay. So that's why it needs to be performed in uh, specialized labs uh, such as ours. Great. So the, the process starts um, not in this lab, but actually with the patient, where we collect a swab from the patient's nose or throat. And this is a key part of the process. We put that sample in some liquid. We make sure it's identified as having that particular patient's name and information on there so we know who we're testing. And then we, um, we pack it up and we bring it here to this lab. So when it gets to the lab, what we do is um, we'll receive the samples in and we'll check them in under this hood. You can see we have some um, biosafety procedures here that um, we put the samples underneath this hood, which, which keeps the, um, the virus in the sample from the environment. Once we receive the samples in, that's just kind of checking it in to make sure we, we have everything, it looks right. And so then once we have that there, we want to take the sample over um, to this, this area over here. And so this is another, you can see that's a multi-step process. So what we do in this particular area is we, we inactivate the virus. So that means that we, we the virus has, um, you know, it's kind of live, it's in the patient. So we bring it into this hood so it becomes no longer infectious. And so that's a key part of our process in the lab is making sure that we're protecting our laboratory staff and others from getting infected with the virus. And so it's a very safe process. So we will deactivate the virus there. So right now samples are being collected only at University Hospital's emergency departments and, and we, the patient will, um, if the patient presents there with symptoms of coronavirus, they will go through a screening process. They will have a mask put on them and they will, um, the staff taking care of them will also put on a mask, um, having protection between the two of them from not transmitting the coronavirus. So they will uh, take them back into a special room where you have, again, further protection from transmitting that virus to others. And the, the staff member will, will, will swab their nose. So if anybody's had a flu swab or a strep test, it's very much like that. So then they'll put that swab into this liquid and initially the virus particles will be on that swab but then they'll come off of it into the liquid. And it ends up being that liquid that we take through this process to test. And our focus on testing at university hospitals and many other hospitals like ours throughout the country is very much focused on testing our sickest population. So we want to focus on getting results back to those who are sickest and in the hospital and um, are at risk of infecting others and having more severe disease. So again, the testing still remains very limited throughout the state and is prioritized globally for patients, as I described, who are sick and needing that hospital care. Um, and, and hospitals such as ours, the Ohio State, or the Ohio Department of Health, are, and national reference laboratories are really trying to expand the amount of testing. But as I described, it's a very complex testing process, and so it, 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 it takes a bit to ramp up. But if you have one of those very, very sick patients, and maybe they're not at me, Mm -hmm. um, any of those sick patients within this, or would they all be transferred? So no, at this point, anyway? again, if anybody has symptoms or has concerns, they need to contact either their provider directly, and they will route them through the appropriate screening processes and take care of them as appropriate for that particular patient. Okay, that makes sense. Um, and they can also call the hotlines for the um, Cuyahoga County Public Health or the Ohio Department of Health. Now, would you recommend if somebody feels like they might be having the symptoms of, of coronavirus, would you make, would you advise that they make Yes, absolutely. If somebody's having symptoms, we want them to have a conversation with their provider or the appropriate place communicated them to call by their provider and not go directly to the emergency department. We really want to work that way through the process so um, we don't overwhelm our emergency department staff who, again, are trying to take, take care of the sickest patients for coronavirus as well as everything else that patients may typically come to the emergency department for. Absolutely. And so when we're going into this room, this is where we actually do um, the, the testing for the viruses. So this is where we will, prep the, um, we will prep the testing. So this type of testing is called polymerase chain reaction. So this is testing for the genetic material of the virus itself. So the way these tests works is 
we have what are called reagents or components of the test. And they are, again, small pieces of genetic material that will match up with the uh, coronavirus gene itself. And then we have a variety of instruments and that, will, um, that do the final part of the testing process. And, and what that happen, when that happens, when, if there is virus there, we'll have a detectable signal, so kind of a light signal that you can see that will tell you that there's something in there, that those, those um, pieces of genes that we put into the, the test matched up with coronavirus gene that's in there, and it will tell you if there's a positive or negative coronavirus. In these, it's, again, these are in a closed system, so these are in little plastic plates that we can do multiple samples at a time, and they, um, we can't physically see it, but there are lights shining through it okay. that um, usually it's a fluorescent signal that the instrument, so the machine that we're using can to see that signal, but not typically visible to the human eye, this change.